Hello guys, this is Revolution. So, we are going to be discussing whether there is a link between these ancient Saiyans that have been doing the rounds in different Dragon Ball projects, and whether or not they have a link to the events that will be occurring in the Broly movie coming out in just three months time. Of course, two weeks before the movie was even announced, before he knew anything about the movie, Toriyama revealed in an interview that Yamoshi was the original Super Saiyan and Super Saiyan God. In Dragon Ball Heroes, we have been introduced to the evil Saiyan Kumba, who is an ancient Saiyan who has a problem with the Super Saiyan God. Then of course, the Dragon Ball Legends game, which dropped this summer, reveals another ancient saiyan or shallot shallow whatever you want to call him basically all three of these are ancient saiyans now obviously yamoshi is canon to the dragon ball super story because akira toriyama was talking in reference to dragon ball super but kumba and shallot are not we are discussing whether they've been influenced by anything that could potentially be coming up in the dragon ball super broly movie vegeta and broly themselves but before we begin I want to know what your thoughts on what the Super Saiyan Rage transformation is for Future Trunks that we saw in the Dragon Ball Super anime Future Trunks saga. I have my own theory that I'll be recovering very soon as I have more to add, but I want to know what your thoughts are on this. Do you like the form itself? Let me know down in the comments section. I look forward to reading your comments. And whilst you're doing that, I want to say a massive thank you to all of you who have continued to support the channel. I do truly appreciate all your continued support. Please do keep smashing that like button, keep lending me your energy, and if you can, please do feel free to share any of my videos with any of your friends who are into Dragon Ball. So in the Dragon Ball Super Broly movie, we know that Goku Vegeta will be coming at loggerheads with Broly himself in the upcoming movie, a completely revamped, repackaged Broly, who will be made canon for Dragon Ball Super. I'm not sure I'll ever get used to saying that, but Akira Toriyama did reveal in an interview that, and in Akira Toriyama's words, naturally you'll get to see fierce combat, but also the paths of destiny that lead to an encounter between Goku, Vegeta, and Broly. It almost sounds as if they're all going to be coming at loggerheads with each other. Whether that will be the case remains to be seen, and obviously there are also rumours that Gogeta will be in the movie in December. Whether that will happen again, once again, remains to be seen. But with the information we have, the Metamoran fusion of Gogeta is looking very probable. But two weeks before Jump Festa revealed that the 20th Dragon Ball movie was coming, Akira Toriyama very, very conveniently revealed that Yamoshi was the original Super Saiyan who was fighting against a Saiyan enemy and was also potentially the first Super Saiyan God. I know some people don't believe he particularly was, but it looks very likely that he was considering the circumstances he was in. This is what Toriyama said. Long ago, a righteous hearted Saiyan named Yamoshi fought against the other Saiyans with five comrades. He was cornered and became a Super Saiyan but was eventually defeated by overwhelming odds. Afterwards, his soul wandered in search of six righteous-hearted Saiyans, hence Super Saiyan God. Beerus sensed Shimosha's spirit in his prophetic dream, and of course, we know that it was that prophetic dream which ultimately led Beerus in search for Goku, and obviously every event that's transpired in Dragon Ball Super has been because of that prophetic dream that was ultimately inspired by Yamoshi's spirit, which has led a lot of people to speculate that Yamoshi will play some part in this movie, whether it just be a reference to him or actually appearing himself. We don't know either way as of right now what will happen in regards to Yamoshi, but I think a lot of us would like to see Yamoshi's story expanded in the future of Dragon Ball, whether that be in the movie or a future hypothetical series. But this movie will at least delve into the history of the Saiyans, especially their relationship with the Frieza Force. We also know this movie will take place over different time periods as well as different locations. So it could, it could delve into the Yamoshi story. And then of course you have to consider the fact that Broly has literally just come out of nowhere. Now a lot of people have speculated that Broly could be an ancient scene himself. And whilst that information also hasn't been revealed yet, it is looking very likely that he may have been born at the same time as Goku, considering we do see the baby tanks whatever you want to call them we see it in Dragon Ball Minus as well we see Goku in the baby tank <laughs> I have no idea what they're called by all means let me know down in the comment section if you do know we see those baby tanks in the trailer to the Broly movie so it does seem like it's following the same direction as the original Broly movie though fingers crossed Broly's motivation is not the same as the original Broly movie and that's that Goku kept crying as a baby please please do not take that avenue Akira Toriyama anyway 
Obviously, Broly has the legendary Super Saiyan transformation, or as it's been entitled in most magazines at the moment, the fully powered Super Saiyan Broly. It does look very akin to Kale's Berserk form that we saw in the Tournament of Power. And we do know that Kale's character obviously was highly influenced by Broly's character. And we find out that this Berserk transformation is a demonic kind of sane transformation that comes about every 1000 years and they basically keep rising in power till they ultimately self-destruct. So this transformation or whatever Broly will be going through in this movie clearly has its origins in the history of the Saiyans lore. Of course, could this demonic Saiyan have been what Yamoshi had to fight all that time ago? We don't know exactly how long ago Yamoshi was, whether it was 1000 years or even further, but could that have been what Yamoshi was fighting against? Of course, Dragon Ball Heroes has introduced Kumba, the evil Saiyan, who can literally turn people berserk just by touching them with his key. Of course, Dragon Ball Heroes is not canon to the mainstream continuity of Dragon Ball Super, far from it. But Bandai Namco, who produce Dragon Ball Heroes, have a very, very close working relationship with Toei Animations, who of course produce the anime for Dragon Ball Super, and are of course producing the Dragon Ball Super Broly movie. Does this mean that Bandai Namco and the creators behind Dragon Ball Heroes have inside information regarding the upcoming Super movie? I'm not saying that at all. They probably don't, they might do, who knows? But there have been occasions where Dragon Ball Heroes products have correctly predicted what's going to happen in Dragon Ball Super the anime and even gone on to name some of the transformations, for example Super Saiyan Rage etc and even Super Saiyan Berserk for that matter that hadn't previously been given a name from Dragon Ball Super itself. Now in the manga of the Dragon Ball Heroes Prison Planet arc, Kumba keeps shouting Super Saiyan God when Goku turns into a Super Saiyan God. He clearly is aggravated by the sight of the Super Saiyan God. We know he is an ancient Saiyan. Was he the original villain to Yamoshi? By all means, he could just be a completely original character on the part of the Dragon Ball Heroes creators, or could they have been fed information further regarding Yamoshi and his tale from long ago? And maybe Kumba was the villain the whole time. Then, of course, we have Shalot in the Dragon Ball Legends game. And Dragon Ball Legends is a Dragon Ball game produced by guess who? Bandai Namco. The same company that produced Dragon Ball Heroes, the same company that have a close working relationship with Toei Animation. Of course, of course, this is a computer game, and we've seen plenty of new original characters created just for the purpose of that computer game. But Shalot, Shallow, however you want to pronounce it, was created by a Kira Toriyama himself. Shalot is basically an amnesiac Saiyan from the earliest eras of Saiyan history. As of the current updates of the game, he cannot remember his past or why he's in the situation he is in. Of course, you'll know this if you are playing Dragon Ball Legends, but Shalot comes across a man who looks just like him in a red hood who is often referred to as the Saiyan in Red. Though the Saiyan in Red nearly defeats him, Goku comes to Shalot's rescue, and the Saiyan in Red basically calls Shalot the blood of the defeated, and calls Goku the blood of the tainted. Of course, Whis then goes on to reveal that Shalot is an ancient Saiyan, and that the different key that Goku feels from him could be related to the fact that he is referred to as the blood of the defeated and Goku is referred to as the blood of the tainted. Now complete speculation here, but the blood of the defeated could be referring to the fact that Shalot may in fact be Yamoshi because you know Yamoshi was ultimately defeated long ago or it could potentially be referring to the fact that the Saiyans who left the original planet Sadol lost in whatever fight they were involved in and ultimately escaped to planet Vegeta and obviously the leader of those Saiyans was Vegeta's ancestors. The last king on planet Vegeta before free to destroy planet Vegeta was obviously Vegeta's dad, King Vegeta. Who knows what the blood of the tainted is but I'm quite confident that Vegeta in particular won't have the same kind of blood as Goku. Now that's just speculation on my part but I imagine Vegeta is either of the royal bloodline or potentially the blood of the defeated and is a descendant of Shalot. And maybe the blood of the tainted which Goku is supposedly of is actually referring to the blood of Yamoshi who fought against these other Saiyans long ago and that could be what the reference of tainted means. Obviously, this is a computer game with its own original story, but once again, Akira Toriyama was heavily involved in the character design for Dragon Ball Legends and potentially the story itself. Have Akira Toriyama, Shueisha and Toei been low-key feeding information to these games and promotional animes to promote the upcoming movie? Could Kumba be an ancestor of Broly? 
Is there a link between all these Saiyans? And of course, maybe if Shallot and Kumba were to eventually find their way into the Super movie, or a potential hypothetical new series, there may be new designs, but are the concepts of these characters related in any way to the Saiyans that are about to encounter each other and the different paths of destiny that have led to this encounter related? After all, there is a little clip in the Broly movie trailer where it looks like Paragus is searching for something alongside another Saiyan, and from behind, it does look a little bit like Shallot. Of course, that would depend on what time period Broly and Paragus have come from, but it is a bit of food for thought. It's also important to note as well, we do actually see Shallot have red eyes for a moment in the actual Dragon Ball Heroes game when he's transforming, and of course, Kumba himself has red eyes. Then you can even look at the trailer, Broly has yellow eyes. What are these eye colours about? Of course, take this video with a pinch of salt because it might just be that none of it's connected whatsoever and it's just me overthinking things as per usual. But there could be a connection and that's what I want to discuss. Let me know your thoughts on all of this down in the comment section. And of course, even though the civil war on planet Sadala wasn't too long ago, what caused that civil war? Who were the Saiyans who escaped to planet Vegeta fighting against? Obviously there were Saiyans, were they a different tribe of Saiyans, a different bloodline of Saiyans? Let me know your thoughts on that down in the comment section too. Basically the point of this video is just to raise loads of questions about the Saiyans. Let me know your thoughts, keep smashing that like button, keep lending me your energy, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Until next time, Ad Astra.